Hey there, me again. Well, it's the holiday season, and I've grown out my best Santa beard and put on my best Christmas sweater so that I could tell you guys about 20 good gift ideas for photographers. So I'm primarily a film shooter, so a lot of these are going to be kind of film specific, but quite a few of these also are going to be for any photographer in your life. So whether they shoot digital or film, a lot of these should work for anybody. Also, I've got lots of stuff on this list that comes in different price brackets, so no matter what your budget is, I'm sure there's going to be something on this list for you. So let's kick it off with number one. And if you shoot film, you know how expensive developing costs can be, and that's why one of the best first gifts you can get is a Patterson tank. Now, a Patterson tank is a little developing tank that you can buy, and it comes with two little spools that you can roll your film into in the darkroom, and then you can develop yourself. And they're very, very handy. They'll save you a lot of money in the long run. So I think a two-roll Patterson tank like this one goes for a little under 30 bucks, so not super expensive. And with all the money you'll save on developing, you should make your money back pretty fast. So staying on the topic of developing, you can't develop without some chemicals. And that's why I recommend getting some chemicals as a gift for that film photographer in your life. Um, because that's, once again, another way to save money, and it's a great, fun way to be a part of the entire photographic process. So I use Cinestills kits because they're really easy to come by, and they're pretty easy to use. Um, I use the CS41 two-bath process for my color film, which I think is 30 bucks, and the black-and-white film developing kit, which is just a monobath, is $19.99, I believe. So... Another pretty good gift idea that's not super expensive. Another great gift, if you've got a film shooter in your life, is a film carrier. Now, film carriers come in many different shapes and sizes. I know Kodak makes them. Um, I don't have a Kodak one, but I actually found a little UN-branded two-roll film carrier, which I think is super cool. looks kind of military-like, and it's really, really cool. I enjoy it. You can clip it onto your belt. And I found this for like five bucks, but I think the Kodak carriers and stuff like that are usually around $25, $30. So if you've got a film shooter in your life, obviously you can get them some film. Now this is a pack of 120 film. There's also 35 millimeter film. So you're going to want to check with the person you're buying it for what kind of film they use in their camera because different cameras take different sizes of film. So uh, definitely a good gift although it might be a little bit obvious. So another cost that really adds up when you shoot film is scanning. I know a lot of places that develop film also will scan your negatives for you, and while that's convenient, it ends up becoming really, really expensive. So one thing you could get a film shooter, especially if they're new and probably don't have one of these yet, is a flatbed scanner. I have an Epson V600 back there. I don't know if you can see it, but that's what I use to scan all of my photos, and it's worked pretty well. And another good thing about those Epson V600s is they come with both Epson Scan and uh, an older version of Silverfast, which is another pretty good scanning software. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more, you can get one of the higher grade flatbed scanners from Epson or if you really want to ball out, I guess you could get a Frontier Noritsu scanner, but uh, those are very limited in their availability and they're very, very expensive. So this is one of those things that you can kind of spend as much as you want, but on the lower end, the Epson V600 is around $250 new, I think. So since we just did kind of a more expensive gift, let's knock off one that's more of a stocking stuffer, and that is these little photo memo books, which are really, really cool. So these photo memo books are made by Shoot Film Co. and they're really, really handy. They're nice to have on you to kind of keep track of what you're shooting, which is kind of hard to do when you're shooting film and you can't just look at your photos instantly. On these books, you've got information that you can write down on the top of each page about the roll number you're on, your start date, your end date, the camera you used, the lens you used, the type of film it is, the ISO, if you're pushing and pulling your development, your subject, and your location that you're shooting at. So very, very handy to keep track of what you're shooting. A two-pack of these books is around $12, and buying these helps support a small company in the film community, which is very nice. So another good gift for any type of photographer, film or digital, 
is a filter. Now there's all kinds of different filters out there. This is just a little Tiffin UV filter, but there's all different kinds. There's orange filters, yellow filters, red filters, chromist filters, and they all have different effects and kind of just maybe ask around and see what the photographer in your life is in need of. So another good gift for the photographer in your life who might want to customize their camera a little bit is a soft shutter button. Now I've got a wood one here on my Canon and these are just really, really cool little touches you can use to customize your camera. And they also sometimes come with matching hot shoe covers, which look really, really nice. Now these come in all different shapes, sizes, materials, designs. You can get wood ones. You can even select the type of wood and the design that's engraved in the top. And there's also brass ones, aluminum ones, all different kinds. So you can customize your camera to your heart's delight there seems to be endless options of these out there, and there's a couple different companies that sell them. I know uh, the ones I got here are from a site called The More Gooder, um, kind of an interesting name, but they're a little bit less expensive. I think they're like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks a piece or something. Um, but if you want to spend a little bit more, there's another website out there I know of called Artisan Obscura and they have tons of really, really intricate designs that look really nice. So definitely check those out and maybe pick them up if you think that's a good thing to get for your photographer friend. Oh, also, thing to note about these shutter buttons is they are threaded, most of them, so you might want to check if the photographer in your life has a threaded shutter button like this. Otherwise, these will not work and you'll have to get uh, an adhesive one, which they do make also for just regular flat shutter buttons. So keep that in mind. Another thing you can get to add kind of a custom touch to the photographer in your life's uh, workflow is a camera strap. This is my camera strap that I've used forever now. Uh, it's a leather camera strap and it says be still on it. I've never seen this strap anywhere online. I've looked a couple times. Um, and I can't really find this exact one, but I have found one that looks like it's the same thing, maybe rebranded or something, and it's made by a company called Tether. So the Tether camera strap that looks pretty much the same as this is $40, um, but there's tons of different straps out there. If you want to go online, there's tons of different designs. There's leather ones, there's uh, rope straps, which are really cool looking, and there's just another, this is another thing that there's endless options of. Also, if you've got a camera store nearby, that's definitely a good place to go and check because they might have stuff that you can't find online and they just, they might have a lot of options right there that you can buy instantly and not have to wait for shipping. Okay, back to holding up my camera and showing you guys another item for customization. Uh, that's a lens hood. Now, this is another thing that there's all different kinds of. You've got round lens hoods, square ones, silver, black, all different kinds. And it's just a good way to customize your camera and it's also very practical as it cuts out lens flares. So they're very useful as well. Now one thing if you're getting one of these screw-on lens hoods is you're gonna want to check and see what the filter thread size is for the lens that your photographer uses. That way they can get a lens hood that fits. And while I've got my camera out, let me talk about these little red discs that are on the camera. These are made by a company called Peak Design, and these are the Peak Design anchors, I think. These are the anchors? No, these are the lugs. And on my camera strap are the anchors. Now, these basically make it very easy for you to clip your camera strap on and take it back off again. And it's also good because you can get these lugs and put them on multiple different cameras and then use the same strap interchangeably between them all. Now Peak Design sells these. You can get the anchors and two sets of these lugs so that you can cover two cameras for like $25, I think. So that's a pretty good and useful gift item for the photographer in your life. Now, if you have any photographers in your life, you know they are on a constant search for inspiration and one really good gift you can get them to inspire them a little bit is a photo book or a zine. Now I've got a couple things here. Uh, this is a zine by one of my friends and a follower of the channel, Julie Cumming. It's a very nice zine. And I also have this photo book, which is titled Galveston, and this is by Jason Lee, 
um, and very good gifts. Uh, they're very good for just kind of promoting that creativity and inspiration, and you can spend less money and get something like a zine from a local artist, or you can spend a little bit more money and get a hardcover photo book. So they cover all different budgets as well. So another useful tool that every photographer should have in their arsenal is a flash. And I've got a few flashes here. Uh, Godox actually sent me two of their flashes. This is the Lux Junior and the Lux Senior. Uh, the Lux Senior is good for film shooters because it kind of has a retro design with this metal dish. And the Lux Junior looks equally good on my vintage cameras as well as my Sony, which is a fairly new camera model. So there's lots of different options out there. Uh, if you have a smaller budget, you could go for something like the Contax TLA20, which they don't make anymore, I don't think, but uh, you can find them on eBay for, I don't know, 25 bucks or so. If you want to get these Godox flashes, the Lux Senior is $120 and the Lux Junior is $70, I believe. So I'll leave links to all of this stuff in the description and you can check it out. All right. Time for another super cheap gift item that is probably more of a stocking stuffer, but this one is definitely really useful if the photographer in your life does a lot of night photography, and that is a shutter release cable. So these shutter release cables uh, basically screw in to your shutter button if you've got a threaded shutter button like I talked about before, and basically what they do is they allow you to operate the shutter mechanism via this cable and that eliminates camera shake when you're shooting on a tripod, and it's very useful for getting sharp images when you're doing long exposures. So definitely pick one of these up if your photographer, friend, or family member doesn't have one already. This is super inexpensive. I think I got this for like $4, so pick one up if you can. Another essential thing every film shooter needs is a negative sleeve. Now, Negative sleeves are essential because they keep your negatives protected after you develop them and they keep dust off of them and keep them from getting scratched and everything like that. Also, you can put them in a binder and keep them organized, which is very nice. I think you can get like a 20 pack of those for like $5 or something. I got a 100 pack of them for 10 or something like that, but they didn't have binder holes, which is very annoying. So if you're going to buy negative sleeves, make sure they've got binder holes because otherwise you're going to be trying to find a place to put them and it's going to become a mess. Now I don't have the next one on this list, but it's a very useful one. And I picked this one up from Nick Carver and his channel about film photography. And that is an orange construction vest. Now you might be wondering, why on earth would I get my photographer friend a orange construction vest? And it's a good question, but hear me out, it's very useful. Now, I do a lot of night shooting, so for one, they're high visibility and it makes shooting at night a lot safer, especially if you're near the road. Um, another reason is people often come up to you and ask you what you're doing if you're taking pictures of buildings or inanimate objects or seemingly mundane things and it's nice to have that construction vest to kind of look a little bit more official like you're documenting a construction site or I don't know you're taking pictures for Google Earth or something like that. People typically leave you alone when you're using an orange construction vest and it's very nice as a photographer to have. All right the next thing you could get for a photographer in your life is a camera bag. Now I've got a few camera bags this is my bigger camera backpack. This is the ProMaster Jasper half pack. And this is nice because it's got a camera cube and up top is more of a traditional backpack. I've done a full video on this bag if you want to see it. Uh, I'll leave the link up here, I think. Also, you could get smaller bags. So I've got a couple bags by Tamarack and this is just a fanny pack, which I pretty much carry with me on all of my shoots. Um, it's just really easy to either wear slung over my shoulder or around my waist. So it's a little bit versatile and it's small, so it keeps my gear light and keeps the different things that I can use down to a minimum. If a fanny pack's not your style, which it's totally my style, uh, but I can, uh, I can understand how it wouldn't be yours, you can also get a small camera bag like this more square one. I wear this sometimes uh, looped through my belt and it's pretty handy. So. Lots of different options out there. Lots of different budgets are covered. 
Um, I think the Jasper camera backpack is $150 or so. These, I, I think I got this for $4 and that one over there, I think I got for 15 or something. So lots of different budgets are covered with this. The next one I also don't have because I just use a light meter app on my phone, but I have used them before and they're very handy and a little bit more precise than the light meter apps. And that's a actual light meter. Uh, so Sekonic is kind of the brand that everybody knows about for light meters. And they make one called the L308X, I think it's called. And that one's a little over $200, and it's just an incident meter, um, but it's very nice to use. And they also make a, a couple different models that are more expensive, like three to $500. So if you want to spend more, you get one of those. And yeah, there's, there's a couple different ones that you could get from Sekonic. I'm sure there's other brands. You can get ones that clip on to your hot shoe as well, which are very portable and nice. Um, but yeah, light meter, good thing to have. Another thing, which I don't have on me, but is a very fun one to get for a photographer is vintage photography apparel. So I know there's tons of Kodak branded stuff and Nikon and Canon um, who typically battled over Olympic coverage. Um, so there's lots of, lots of Olympic branded jackets that are either Nikon or Canon, whoever was the designated camera manufacturer for the Olympics that year. Um, and Kodak, Kodak's got tons of apparel, sweaters, jackets, hats. So there's, there's got to be something out there for the photographer in your life. And the final one on the list, which is probably the most useful thing a photographer can have, is a tripod. Now, uh, if the photographer in your life doesn't have a tripod or needs a new one, uh, you could always look at ones by Manfrotto and Benro. They both make pretty solid tripods. Um, I would just make sure to get one that's got something like a ball head or something that's really easily adjustable on top so that they can level their camera. So that about does it for my holiday gift list for photographers. I hope there was something out there that you know your photographer, friend, or family member doesn't have and could use, and I hope there was something in there that fits your budget. Anyways, that's about it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy holidays. Bye now.